so this this guy wrote divided soul so this aretha franklin book is gonna be juicy y'all all right y'all so the book i'm gonna be reading as uh, new book we got is aretha franklin's respect written by david ritz first i'm gonna start off by reading the time he met her and then you guys know what i do next so at the mid 1970s when i began my career as an author there were three people i was determined to work with ray charles aretha franklin and marvin Gaye. these were the singers about whom i was most passionate i simply had to meet them i was certain that their lives were as intriguing as their music ray came first i pursued him un Rentlessly. Blocked at every turn, I succeeded only when Western Union told me I could send him messages and Braille. I poured my heart into those telegrams. He agreed to meet me, we bonded, and were off to the races, but not before I gave up my original plan of writing his biography in my voice and decided instead to write the story in Ray's own voice. That was the moment when I discovered the thrill and the beauty of ghostwriting. The book that followed, Brother Ray, was well received and gave me the confidence to pursue my next project, collaborating with Aretha. But when Ray introduced me to her in his dressing room at Dorothy Chandler Pavilion in Los Angeles, she said she wasn't interested, at least not then. After writing a series of novels, I connected with Marvin Gaye, where the process was reversed. In the middle of our collaboration, Marvin was tragically murdered by his father. I had no choice but to turn to our unfinished autobiography into a biography rendered in my voice so this this guy wrote divided soul so this aretha franklin book is gonna be juicy y'all i mourn for marvin and wish more than anything that i could have written the book entirely from his point it was singular yet filled with grief from that moment forward i saw that given option i'd much rather work as a ghostwriter than an independent biographer not only did I cherish the personal connection with the artist, I loved channeling the artist's voice. I felt like an actor playing a choice role. For the next 20 years, I ghostwrited books for, among others, Smokey Robinson, at the James B.B. King, and the Neville Brothers. After the publication of each book, I sent a copy to Aretha with a note expressing my hope that she and I would be collaborating one day soon. After the writing the autobiography of Jerry Wexler, Aretha's most important producer. I thought that day was coming. In researching Wexler's life, I found myself researching a large proportion of Aretha's life. Wexler had a long association with practically every major musician who had worked with Aretha, and he put me in touch with all of them, including John Hammond, Aretha's original producer, whom I interviewed at length. Working in the field of rhythm and blues for decades, I had built an enormous body of research on the life and work of Aretha. I had spent Hundreds of hours speaking to her most knowledgeable colleagues. Luther Vandross, the producer of a comeback hit, Jump To It. Arif Martin, the orchestrator who had worked with her for over 40 years. And Ruth Bowen, Aretha's booking agent and perhaps her closest business associate. Who answered every one of my questions with unflinching candor. Most significant, it was my relationship with Aretha's immediate family. Her brothers Cecil and Vaughn and her sisters Irma Cecil and Vaughn and her sisters Irma. Working in the field of rhythm and blues for decades, I had built an enormous body of research on the life and work of Aretha. I had spent hundreds of hours speaking to her most knowledgeable colleagues, Luther Vandross, the producer of a comeback hit, Jump To It, Arif Martin, the orchestrator who had worked with her for over 40 years, and Ruth Bowen, Aretha's booking agent and perhaps her closest business associate who answer every one of my questions with unflinching candor. Most significant, it was my relationship with Aretha's immediate family, her brothers Cecil and Vaughn and her sisters Irma 